Muhammad will be, for example, standing here, and I'm standing back here, and he can tell you like this is the still of Osiris, yes, uh, and yes, like, this, huh? like uh, now we yeah, will yeah, ask yeah. the God if he, if, okay. for, if he accepted your offering, okay. and then I will. Come on, come on, uh, Emery, Emery, come. Continue. The okay, day. Emery now wants to marry and uh, his father-in-law refusing. So he came to make offerings, so to find a way to convince the father-in-law to agree. Okay, what are the offerings? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 50 dollars, 50 dollars. <laughs>so here at Karnak if you look at all of these huge columns you notice that they're made out of a number of different pieces and that is manageable by a working crew however right next to it we have an obelisk this obelisk is basically of the same scale but it's composed of one piece of stone this is much more of a challenge than that from a technical viewpoint also, this material is local. This is from the quarry at Aswan. The theory is that the obelisk has nothing to do with the dynastic e Egyptian culture. The dynastic Egyptians built all of these incredible limestone and sandstone buildings. But that's from another older culture who had the capability to work on that kind of scale of one single block, hewing it out from the bedrock, moving it, shaping it, erecting it. This could be a receiving station of the energy from the pyramids, if the pyramids were energy power plants. It's like what Tesla was trying to achieve and did achieve. He reinvented a very ancient yeah, process. Well, you give a general indication. Someone has to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so the second later. name, and we explain that this name this is supposed to be his original name. And this is the title as a king. And this title can be repeated. That's why we have four roughly. hypotenuse. So we have Ra. It's within about... Chosen by Ra. Uh, guesstimation. Okay. And the word is mil. P, if you follow my... Three or four millimeters that less? That P and F More. Can More. This hole, and it is very clear that it's a kind of a very nice cut and it indicates very soft layer inside. So I think that uh, in modern time when we invented drill machines, I think it's dating back like 20, 30 years ago maximum. But that kind of small hole, but that what we call it the, the cub or the, the big tube cutting this way, this is in the last six or eight years mm -hmm. when we have this size. When I was doing uh, my uh, natural gas uh, system in my house, it, they, they told me they were having new one for bigger hole. Mm. This this would the the last one we have a size like this, but big size like this? No, that is very hard, mm -hmm. and it is perfectly. This is possibly the finest example of a core drill in existence. See the size of it. The thing is, this it was a hollow tube drill, and that's the thickness of the wall of the drill and if you look carefully you can actually see the spiral groove created by the drill as it was going through this pink um, <coughs> granite from Aswan. This is high technology. Solid Aswan granite.
Can I get a piece of, of the outside the hard there? and the soft? So any theories, Susan? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. She hasn't okay. studied it. That's good. She doesn't jump to conclusions. Seems like they're Which is great. Material structure. Exactly. No, it looks like the core, the erosion inside is greater than the erosion outside here. Outside and the fragile yes. part is in the inside. Yeah, I like it seems like the structure from the inside transformed mm -hmm. and then shrinked. And because the stone can't shrink, so it, it cracked like that. But again, as we keep repeating that we have so many other examples in the same time, uh, the same uh, uh, environment, but not the same result. Right. Here they're like more soft and outer is like... That's exactly my thing. That's the point. exactly the question. I mean, if you want to write something on top, you want the tops to be soft, not inside. No, but this is not about writing. It's not about writing. It's about if these devices, if these chambers were once active, there is a, a function, there is a, a, a like a dynamic or um, activation that happened. And this happened, you know, the vibration that's in the stone, if it, if it inducts actually currents of energy or something like that. And this is all theories, of course, until we understand from geology point of view what possibly could change the stone. Physicists have to look at this too. Exactly. Because the thickness of the process, but... How would you? <laughs> How would they know and where to cut it? Yeah, because if you if you heated it up and then threw cold water onto it, you would see the effect on the outside. Right. So to have that effect on the inside, it's... and another way out there is maybe it's a, a constructed rock. Well, that's what I was wondering if that was yeah. kind of like a plastery thing on the outside yeah, of it. Yeah, sort of poured into a mold and then you know it it. it it formed like, yeah, harder on the outside, so that's why it's a crust. Yeah. So even the geologists have agreed, who are here, that something very strange happened to this black stone because the core of it is more unstable than the surface. The crystal size in the core is bigger than the outside surface. And some theorize, again, that this was part of an energy system. Energy was running through the stone and possibly there was a giant burst of energy that went through it, destabilized it, and basically caused this stone and others here at Karnak to explode thousands of years before the dynastic times. Another point being that this is all sandstone, and yet this stone here in the middle, that is the gray or black granite. So rather than just being put there because it was pretty and ornamental, this may have been here originally, and all of this was built around it later. Okay, to be fair, this was shown to Hakim by men named Boris Said in the early 80s. Boris Said is a producer. If you have uh, folks who have ever seen John Anthony West's video, The Mysteries of the Sphinx, done in 1987, Boris Said produced it. He was born in Egypt, Russian born in Egypt, but he knew this. But since the 80s, Hakim was the only one that showed this to us. So, you're going to see an example of residence. So, everybody, come over to the side and put your ear to the side. No, it doesn't matter. Anywhere on the obelisk. Go ahead. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> You're kidding. You're kidding. There you go. Mm. Okay, please. Ring the like a bell. As we can see here too, Ramses II, or one of the Ramses, I think, yeah, it is Ramses II, reused the material of these chapels in another construction. But then they were aware of this when they were renovating these chapels, so they brought them back. But then they cannot erase the writings that was made by Ramses II. So obviously we can see that this part of the shrine used to be this Side, way and he, when he took it, yeah, he, he oh. used it in a different way. That's why we see the writings here is in this line. This is 
is never a way for writings. Yes, we have horizontal and vertical writings and from left to right, but not in that direction. This was supposed to be so far. I know how difficult it is, mm. especially when you go to this type of hole. This is done by, by what? The normal drill is like a, a long uh, piece, okay, with the zigzag, to make just a hole. Yeah. This drill, no, different. This drill has a long piece like, like a, like a cup. Also. Ah, that's what we call, we call it in modern, um, if we translate it a little bit. The other thing about this hole, you can actually see the spiral marks of the drill going through this pink Aswan granite. But also, this has a very specific tone of vibration, this stone. As you all have come to realize, the theme of uh, Muhammad and Yusuf together, there's nobody better in the world at understanding the glyphs and the style of writing. But what Hakim show talked to me about is where the glyphs appear is very important on a temple. So, for example, in the Holy of Holies, only the high priests and priestesses would go there. So that was the secret initiatic information. Not all the other priests would go. Other parts of the temple were different things for different priests. But to understand that the common people only went in the temple a couple of times a year. Mostly they're always just outside this area here. There were certain area, times like called the Hotep de Nisu, the harvest feast, where it hit the nose and people would be invited in the temple to eat cooked food. But most of the time, the people were only on the outside. So as we know, common people could not read and write the glyphs. Only the priests or the higher peoples. But they knew what the pictures would say and the priests would come out and tell them. So from this wall all the way down this wall is described what we know an actual historical event. It is known as the Battle of Kadesh with, or Kadosh. We're talking about 1225 BCE, time of Ramses II. So the giant person that's been depicted here is Ramses II. So this was what we know a known war between the Egyptians and the Hittites in Turkey. The Hittite Empire was their great enemy at this time. So this battle, what the inscriptions show, what the pictures show, Ramses led the army of Ra. He divided his armies into different letters. And he led the armies of Ra. And when they entered the battle, they destroyed the Hittites. They just scattered their armies to the wind, wiped them totally out. And he was victorious. As you've seen, and uh, as Yusuf told me, there's one relief down here that Muhammad likes. He's actually beating somebody. It's one person, but he's vibrating. So it looks like it's many people right on this wall here. So obviously this shows that the Egyptians won the war. Okay, now we know because of archaeology, we go to the Hittite capital of Hattusis in Turkey. The same battle is depicted on the wall. Only shows the Hittite king destroying the Egyptian army, winning the battle, scattering the armies to the wind. So, who was right? But we know now, because of archaeology history, they're both right. What happened is really the battle was a draw. And what happens, what occurs is what is called the first recorded peace treaty in history. The Hittites and the Egyptians make a peace treaty, no more fighting. And so that's the historical event. But let me give you a little letter. There's a famous American movie known as uh, The Devil and Daniel Webster. No, no, it was 1958. British-American production had all star cast, American actors and British actors of the day. The great Sir Lawrence Olivier was playing Cor uh, General Cornwallis. And at the end of the film, it's become obvious that the great British Empire is going to have to surrender, surrender to this ragtag guerrilla army of colonies. So, Cornwallis, an aide de camp, comes into the scene and says to him, but General, what will history say? And the great Sir Larry, without missing a beat, says downstage to the camera, 
History, history, sir, will lie. 